What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of career mode this is episode number 181 and we start today's episode off by putting in a bid for Chris Ince of West Ham United remember this guy Probably not. Um, well, we put in a bid for him when we were back at West Bromwich Albion. He was obviously a couple of years younger back then. He is a 73 rated goalkeeper. Now, you ask me how I know that. As I mentioned before, it's because I am England manager and, uh, and can therefore check the players' overalls uh, while selecting them from the squad. And Chris Ince is currently a 73 overall goalkeeper, 21 years old. West Ham value him at £1.6 million. And I put in a straight bid of just a swap deal with John Ruddy, then upped it to £1 million plus Ruddy after. So they ask for a few more million pounds plus the goalkeeper we have right now and we'll wait and see what they say now Ruddy is a 77 rated overall goalkeeper and you're probably thinking why are you doing that here's the answer John Ruddy is on 60 grand a week He's a third choice goalkeeper. He'll never play. He's 33 years old. He's, you know, he could still possibly grow one or two more ratings, potentially. You never know. But the likelihood of him ever playing in my club for Arsenal ever again is highly doubtful. What we're trying to do here at Arsenal is shift on the deadwood, bring in younger, fresher faces with potential and lower wages. It's as simple as that, basically. That £1 million plus John Ruddy deal for Chris Inns to most people would seem like a bit of a waste of time. When you consider the aims we have here, at Arsenal what we're trying to do it seems like a perfectly fair deal so there you go uh, still we take on Crystal Palace for the first game and the first and only game of today's episode here with Arsenal now unfortunately for us with Crystal Palace sitting bottom of the table and us desperate to get into the top four this year I felt as though this would be a pretty routine victory for us we did have our first North London derby on the weekend as well in the FA Cup fourth round but it wasn't going to be routine because in the 11th minute, a former striker for West Bromwich Albion, remember this guy, the super sub, Victor and Ichibi got played forward. And I pulled the shirt just the once with Matthew Debushi, the right back. But that was enough for an Ichibi to go down, win a free kick and also get Debushi sent off with a straight red card. So Arsenal down to 10 men, just 10 minutes in, Debushi getting sent off. And most people would have predicted this to be a routine three points for Arsenal. But after that red card, probably not. Jack Hunt then went close for Crystal Palace, but he's shot went wide of the post. However, in the 23rd minute, we would take the lead in this game, despite having a man disadvantage through Eduardo Vargas. Now, in the team lineup, you would have seen we played a lot of fringe players for this game because we have an FA Cup clash against Spurs on the weekend. And Vargas, one of the fringe players, playing for his future here at Arsenal, gets his first goal of the season in the Premier League. I started him in this game. I wanted to see what he could do and he got a goal as well so Palace nil, Arsenal 1 getting on the end of that Joel Campbell cross and giving us the lead in this game and from kickoff, Palace give the ball away Coquelin runs clear and I should have made it 2-0 I tried to dink the ball over the goalkeeper and be a bit cheeky instead Wayne Hennessy made quite a simple save and kept it at 1-0 so still 1-0 in this game but to be honest despite going down to 10 men early on and you know I, you saw the league table a minute ago Crystal Palace are rock bottom with just 4 points accumulated and set for as things stand a record record low for points accumulated in a single Premier League season. Of course, Derby hold the record right now. So Palace set to break that record. No one wants it, but Palace set to break that record. And, you know, when we got Debussy sent off, yes, we're a far better team than Crystal Palace in terms of the players we had out there, but we were still playing a weaker side. We were down to 10 men just 10 minutes in. I was expecting the Palace to put us under a lot of pressure and make it difficult for us and probably at least go for at least one point in this game. Fact of the matter is, they had a couple of chances, but in the second half, they did nothing. The game finished 1-0 to Arsenal, and let's just say I can see exactly why Palace are currently sitting rock bottom of the Premier League table because they just did not do anywhere near as much as they needed to. Uh, still following that, we had a transfer big coming for Olivier Giroud. He's on his way to Upton Park for £2.8 million. Totally fine with that. Again, just another one of those players who, quite frankly, doesn't really have a future here at Arsenal and needs to get shifted on as soon as possible. He's been a good servant at Arsenal, but now his time with the Emirates has come to an end and he's on his way to Upton Park. And we also put in a bid for Ryan Saar of West Bromwich Albion. Now, if you remember this guy, we promoted him just before we left to Paris Saint-Germain, and he does have a lot of potential. He's probably not worth 80 million, as I accidentally almost put it in there, but I'd say he's worth around 8 million pounds. Again, I can check his overall. He's currently a 78 overall left back slash centre back. He's six foot, he's 18 years old, and this guy has the potential to be special, as you would have seen. And I know a lot of people don't like me signing former players, but Ryan Saar, we only played with him a couple of times when we promoted.
promoted him with West Bromwich Albion to the first team from the academy. So he's, it, you know, technically are signing an old player, but he's not really someone who's, you know, had too much involvement in the series so far. So Ryan Saar coming in, i got to be honest, he is my main target as we do go into deadline day. We also put in a bid for Phil Jones as well at Manchester United, 83 overall, can play centre-back, right-back, and also central midfield he's listed as in positions, even though, personally speaking, I think he's much better playing in defence. Even so, Phil Jones coming in will be good for us. And also a new bid for John Stones. Of course, Stones, we are still uh, currently looking at trying to sign, but I don't think Roberto Martinez will let us take his centre-back. Uh, still, it was time for transfer deadline day, as you would have seen. We had 10 hours to t uh, 10 hours to do a lot of business, as we had so many players trying to get sold, and so many players trying to join the club as well. Ospina is on his way to Germany, though. David Ospina is going to join Schalke for £5.5 million, pounds, and I'm totally fine with that, because quite frankly, as you can see here, West Ham did accept a £1 million pound deal, plus John Ruddy for Chris Ince, the goalkeeper, which means we have a backup goalkeeper there already. He may be six ratings lower than, um, than Ospina, but I don't think it's going to matter too much, because Chesney will play the vast majority of all our games. Uh, still, as you can see, West Ham did accept the bid to go ahead and put in a contract for him. He wants forty grand a week, but he's not going to get it, because the whole point of signing these players is giving them lower wages than what the uh, the previous ones are on. So Ince is going to come in for hopefully 25 grand a week. Everton reject the deal for John Stone, who so again will put in a new one for him. They want 12 and a half million pounds, but I'm really reluctant to pay that. I don't mind, but he's not my main target for centre back. It's Ryan Saar, so we'll have to wait and see. As you can see, West Brom did reject the bid for Ryan Saar, which is a real shame. So I would love to get hold of the left back. He is listed as a left back, but as you would have seen, um, well, back when we were managing West Bromwich Albion, I don't know, don't know whether I would have showed this, but he's listed as a left back and a centre back. And due to those stats, due to the way his stats sort of shape up, he's probably better as a centre back. So that's where I'll probably play him. Even so, he put in a new bid and we'll wait until West Brom say. Also a new bid for uh, Phil Jones at United, twelve and a half million pounds. We'll wait and see what Louis Van Gaal says. And also a bid for Sonny Myrie Williams at Stoke as well. This guy looks really decent, twenty-one years old. 75 overall, got the showing great potential tag, and he could be a very good backup centre back for us. And if we can shift on Per Mertesacker as well, who's currently on 60 grand a week at 78 overall, 35 years old, going down in terms of attributes really quickly. And the sooner we can get him out and bring in a fresher face, the better. Uh, still, we'll have to wait to see what Stokes say. Also, Everton again rejected a bit for John Stones. They won't let us take him unless we get 12 and a half million, uh, give them 12 and a half million pounds, which I don't really want to do. Uh, also, a new bid for Ryan Sardo because this guy. He is my main target. My number one target for deadline day is signing this guy. So we put in a bit of 12.5 million pounds and we'll wait and see what West Bromwich Albion will say. And also, as you can see as well, Chris Ince, West Bromwich Albion, uh, sorry, Chris Ince at West Ham did accept his contract as well as Ospina does lead to Schalke for 5.5 million pounds, which is good for me because I don't really feel like we needed him. Uh, and also a bid for Sonny Mario Williams was rejected of 1 million pound plus Murtasaka. So we put in a new bid for him of 2. Uh, I think it's 2.5 million pound plus Murtasaka. Yep, and we'll wait and see what Mark Hughes will say. Uh, still, as well, um, uh, Chris Insta, as I just mentioned really quickly and <laughs> shouldn't have done whilst we were looking at other things, he did accept his contract, so he's going to come in for £1 million plus John Ruddy, and you would have seen the wage budget go up there. That's because Ruddy was uh, getting paid more than what Chris Insta is going to do, and that's exactly why we signed him. You're looking at his stats right there. Yes, a bang average goalkeeper at 21 years old, but the point is we've got a younger player with potential for the future. He's got this show and great potential tag, and yeah, I, I think personally speaking, we did a good deal there to make sure we get out one of those players who's just quite frankly he's a white elephant he's just costing too much money we don't need him and getting in a fresher face for the future uh, still following out a bid for Jordan Proctor again I can check the overalls of these players so I know how good they are this guy is a 68 rated right back he's not the best but he's got the show and great potential tag and with Debussy on the transfer list possibly getting sold soon with Callum Chambers who's coming back from injury set to be my main right back I'd like a good understudy for him who is going to be young enough to still have a lot of potential to grow and he could be a perfect player to develop whilst playing understudy to Callum Chambers and as things stand because he's still here, Matteo Debussy. Uh, still a bid for Lyndon Abita as well from Swansea City. Again, he's another player who has the showing great potential tag, but I'm not sure I want to spend too much time developing a 67 overall centre-back, but we'll have to wait and see. Also again, Roberto Martinez, as you can see, rejecting the bids for John Stones. They won't let us take him unless it's 12.5 12, uh, 12 million pounds. We put in a straight bid of 12 million pounds, but quite frankly, as Ryan Saar is currently... Uh, 
probably going to be joining us as West Brom do accept the transfer offer as Martinez comes back to us and says you're not meeting our demands so no further talks I was like fair enough because I don't really care Ryan Saar was the main target and I knew we could get him for a similar fee than what we're going to pay for John Stones so yeah I wasn't really bothered about that deal anyway and I probably would have stalled it until I could find out whether Saar was going to join the club anyway so it didn't bother me at all that that didn't come off we offer Ryan Saar a contract and we wait until it happens also another rejects for uh, for Stoke Swansea and CD National for Proctor Mario Williams and also uh, who was the other player I was thinking of right there Proctor Mario Williams and Abita uh, all three of those players we're looking at right now all those new gens slash regens we'll have to wait and see what these clubs says we put in new bids for all three of those players and yeah we'll, we'll have to wait and see because again all of these players won't be first team players they'll be players who are going to be developed for the future on the bench and in the reserves but it will help us sort of um it will help us bring in the young players and young fresher faces with potential for the future which is one of our main aims so we'll wait and see what these three clubs say as we put in new bids for all of the players and to be honest I'm not really too fussed about this guy Lyndon Abita so we put in a bit of £1 million and wait and see what they say but as for Proctor and Mario Williams those are the two players I really do want we just have to wait and see what happens though uh, still following that as you can see Ryan Saar did accept his contract so he's going to join and again I will say I'm sorry if you don't like me signing former players but this guy barely played at all in the series whilst we were still at West Bromwich Albion as he comes in he is going to play a lot of minutes for us and quite frankly at 18 years old 78 overall potential to be special yes his physical attributes aren't amazing but his technicals are superb I am very very happy that signing and just like Kagan Holland is he worth the money we've paid for him right now well right now probably not in three or four seasons time I'm pretty sure he'll be worth more than that so yeah I'm happy with that deal even if it does look like a bit of an overspend still new bids for Proctor and also Myri Williams however uh, Lyndon Abita, Swansea did accept the £1 million bid for the centre-backs. So we go ahead and offer him a contract and we'll wait and see what they say. But I'm not too sure if I want to sign him anyway, as I mentioned. We'll have to wait and see, though. Uh, still, Ryan Saar has joined the club. And as you can see, those defensive stats at just 18 years old are crazy good. And yes, his physicals are poor. I do know that. Um, but to be honest, I, 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 I can live with that. I can live with those physical stats knowing that this guy is going to grow and grow. And with his stats already, the technical stats already being incredible, he He's just going to grow to be a complete monster when it comes down to the technical side of his game in, let's say, four, five, six seasons' time. Uh, still, a new bid for Mbai and Yang. That deal is probably not going to come off, and I highly doubt we'll be signing the boy, at least in this transfer window. We'll probably have to wait until the summer at the very earliest. We put in a bid regardless though and wait and see what happens because I'd love to get Niang back as soon as possible but I don't think we'll be getting him in the January transfer window and it's not really our aim anyway so I don't mind too much. Uh, still following that new bid for uh, Rani Unlu. Now of course you guys know who that is. I've been looking at him for a while now. He does look like a really, really, really good young player who could be fantastic for us for the future and also Lyndon Abita did accept his contract and we stalled it because I wasn't too sure whether I wanted to go through this deal. We'll have to wait and see. But also Bayern Munich rejected a bid for Rani Unlu, which is a real shame as did PSG and National for Niang and Proctor we did uh, uh, consider rejecting the bid for Rani Inlu because I thought 25.9 million pounds is ridiculous but we'll have to wait and see uh, still PSG again rejecting the bid for Niang and again I, I decided to offer all we had for the guy because yes we don't need him but he could definitely bring something to the club which could really you know he's, he's the type of player who wins games on his own so we'll have to wait and see what they say but I can't see it happening and as you can see they rejected the bid and I just said you know what forget it we're not going to be able to afford him so we'll just have to leave it there Still, Bayern Munich, who did reject a bid for Rani Unlu. He is a central midfielder I really would like. Uh, he does look like as though he's probably got... He's, well, he's got the exciting prospect uh, tag for potential. So he's probably between 85 to 89 potential. But I'm confident with enough game time we could possibly get him into the 90s. That might be a little bit too ambitious, but his technical stats are fantastic. We've seen them before. We'll have to wait and see. Still, Craig Butler's going to join Yeovil on loan. I accidentally deleted the email for this, so sorry about that. But he's going to join Yeovil on loan and head off to Hewish Park, which I'm okay with. And also confirmation there. As you can see, Bayern Munich did accept a £17.5 million deal plus Francois Coquelin for Rani Unlu. So Unlu could join us and again, maybe it's a bit of an overspend at £17.5 million pounds plus Coquelin. But as you can see here, he does accept his contract. And this guy, as I mentioned before, he's got the potential to grow and grow and grow and be a fantastic player for this Arsenal team 
for the long term. You know, the whole point of this transfer window is bringing in those players who, you know, may not be in the first team and the first 11 in the first season, but, you know, in, in three or four seasons time, they will be growing and growing and already being a first team player and just looking like an absolute monster as they continue to develop and show how good they really are. As you can see, great technical stats. Physicals aren't bad either. Neither are the mentals. 78 overall, 21 years old. Is it an overspend? Absolutely. Will it be an overspend in five years time? We'll have to wait and see. I'm pretty sure it will turn out to be a good investment for us. Still, Inlu comes in and I'm happy with that. A new bid for Jordan Proctor at £2.3 million as well. And as you can see, Lyndon Abita had indeed accepted his contract, but also I still wasn't sure about it because Sonny Mario Williams, I was still contemplating getting the guy. I put in a straight bid of £6 million plus per Murtasaka because I just want to get rid of Murtasaka. He's on 60 grand a week and he's going down in stats. And as you can see, with two hours to go, both Stoke and National accepted the bids of £6 million plus Murtasaka and £2.3 million pounds for Proctor. So we offer Mario Williams a contract. Again, we only had two hours left, so we had to get these deals done on the first time of asking. So I gave Mario Williams a 40 grand a week contract on five years. He's only 21 years old. He's going to grow and grow and grow. He's got to show in great potential tag, as does this guy, Jordan Proctor. So for these two players, are these overspends? Absolutely. But again, it's all about the investment. Will they be good enough in the future? Based on the showing great potential tag, you'd certainly think so. So with one hour to go, as you can see, we had to complete the deals as soon as possible, otherwise we wouldn't be able to sign them. And as you can see, they both accepted their contracts. So we had three players waiting to come in, and in the end, we actually ended up signing all three. So in the end, we go ahead and sign a whopping six players on deadline day. Six players, absolutely crazy. We brought in Ryan Saar, Chris Ince, Rani and Lou, Jordan Proctor, Lyndon Abita, and Sonny Myri Williams. Six players arriving on deadline day. That is absolutely crazy. I don't think I've ever signed that many players on deadline day before that's got to be a new record for me but all of these players are coming into the club and again to reiterate like I've been saying throughout the entire episode and you're already sick of me saying this are these players overspends right now yes will they be in the future well we don't know for sure but based on their potential probably not they'll probably end up being fantastic investments for the future if not in the first team then probably being sold on for a profit for more than what we paid for them so you got to look at the bigger picture here yes we spent a lot of money yes a lot of these players aren't good enough for the first level right now but we're matching our objectives we're shifting on those players like John Ruddy and Per Mertesacker and Olivier Giroud who quite frankly are nowhere near good enough for the first team right now and costing a significant salary here at the Emirates Stadium and yeah we spent 51 million pounds in just a few days since joining Arsenal but I got to be honest all the signings we made I'm pretty pleased with because I know they may not be good enough right now but I'm sure they will be in the future so six players on deadline day absolutely crazy we've already got off to a great start though with our aims here at Arsenal shifting on a few old players and bringing in some younger fresher faces as well but that's going to end the episode so as always a big thank you for watching the video guys really hope you have enjoyed it if you have enjoyed today's episode of career mode which has been a longer episode then please do leave a like it is much appreciated and it really really does help my channel out and I'll see you for the next episode of career mode very soon